Hey guys, and before we get into this video, I just want to cover two things. First of all, as you see behind me, uh, I have a new redstone world. Well, that's actually because my old one got corrupted. There's nothing I can do. Uh, something with my launcher mixing up files with Chris Forge. It doesn't matter. It's not like I had anything important in there. And second of all, I'd like to cover how people have been calling my thumbnails and titles clickbait. Now, I'm working on improving that. Of course, I am not perfect and I do make mistakes. Uh, mostly uh, update suppression, update uh, suspension, two different things. You should probably read my titles a bit more carefully if you're gonna critique them. However, uh, yeah, I am working on improving that and I hope I don't make any more mistakes in the future. And this video is actually a fix for the actual Instagram stone one with more detail and well, better explanations. First of all, I'd like to clarify how update order works. First of all, there's three categories. First of all, our block shape up, no, not block shape, block updates which are mostly only doable with pistons. Then there is block shape updates. And it's anything that changes shape or color or state, something that an observer can detect. And then there is style picks. That is anything that you do with redstone, uh, components, repeaters, observers, and comparators. So during every game tick, Minecraft first checks for block updates, then shape updates, and then tile tick updates. Now, when a piston gets powered, it checks if it can extend. That includes if there is blocks in front of it that it cannot push, and if it is powered. If the first one is no and the second one is yes, then yes, it will extend, because it can. So it schedules a block event upon itself, which will go off uh, well, during the next two game ticks. It, it also sends shape updates in all directions, uh, except in a very special case that I did examine in my previous video. It also sends block updates, uh, block updates in all directions, which also updates other pistons. As you see there. Now it is important to differentiate block events and block updates. Block updates are when a piston updates other blocks, other pistons usually, and that happens after tile ticks. They are like the tile tick of pistons. So block updates. Block updates are processed from X to Z, X, Y, Z, from negative to positive. So negative X, positive X, positive Y, and negative Z. A, B, C, D. A, B, C, D. Now, shape updates. Shape updates go from X to Z and Y, as you see here. Now, the general rule of thumb for tile ticks is that they are updated in the way they are powered, in the order. But some do have a different priority. As you see here, that repeater does actually power in the order it is powered. But if I were to put a comparator there, the other one powers first. Now, the lower priority value a uh, Teletic will have, the faster it will get executed. It goes from lowest to highest. So, in this case, the comparator here would have a Teletic priority of 3 and the repeater of 1. Now, if a repeater or comparator, or basically any Teletic, has another one of itself in front of it, in this case, comparator, repeater, and repeater, repeater, its priority will change by 2. It'll become too lower. So, this, these two have too lower priority. In this case, this one has equivalent priority to this one because a comparator with two lower priority will have the same priority as a normal repeater. Now, a good way to show this priority change is with a circuit like this. So as you see here, of course, the repeater goes first because it has lower priority. But if I actually do this, now this, this is just random. It goes off of which side I power it on. So like that. But if I were to power it here, it would have the same priority as there. Sadly, the comparator breaks, but you get the point. Now, this does not work if there is a dust or a block in between the actual comparators and repeaters. Here, as you see, these are further apart, so they will have lower priority. Even though there's three of them, so it should theoretically take three ticks, some of these have a different priority. So this one goes first because it's just repeaters being married. Well, we call it married because, um, vocabulary. Either way, this one has one comparator, so it should have two lower priority. This one has just spaced out repeaters. So we should see one two, and three, A, B, and C. First of all, before we continue, I'd like to clarify, redstone ticks are not a real thing, they're just two game ticks, but as most components do run on two game ticks, we just adopted the term redstone tick. Now on screen right now, I'll put a list of all of the delays of all of the components. Some of these are only when turning off. A link to a more detailed report on this will be in the description. Now, rails. Rails update from the first block to the last. However, observers detect them recursively in the other way. So if I grab observers, specifically, let's grab two observers and two pistons, what you'll see is that the further one goes off first. 
Now, when pistons are powered, they schedule a block event. These block events go off in the order that they are updated. So over here I have an example. So these are both quasi-powered and then first this one is directly powered so it goes off. Which updates this one and then this one. So we should see A, B, and C. In the event that a order of updating is not predictable, it follows normal block event update order. I sadly will not be covering dust locationality in this video as it's very complicated, it changes due to your game version and even your java version, so it's too inconsistent to make a short video about. Just to demonstrate how chaotic dust is. Now how slime on a piston updates is that it updates from the furthest block to the side of the piston towards the nearest, so A, B, and C. And if slime blocks are being pushed forward and backwards, they update in the opposite order of movements. So if I push, push it in this way, it'll update A, B, and C. And when I pull it back, it'll update A, B, and C. As you see here, A, B, C, A, B, C. A uh, here is on this side, A here is on this side. Thankfully, Mojang's spaghetti code does not change anything when we use honey. Now another thing I have to debunk are micro ticks and block event delay. They do not actually exist, everything in Minecraft is put in an order and executed so, the next time you hear someone talking about micro ticks, correct them and be as annoying about it as you can. Whew, that's everything in update order, now let's get to the actual beef of the video, instant redstone. On to zero tick technology, any pulse of one game tick or lower length will teleport inside of a nine end, well inside of an entity and generally teleport the block. As you see here, this is a bud. A bud generates a uh, one game tick pulse, which will go into this dust, but the repeater automatically puts it into two game ticks, which is powered with this. As you see there, that will actually work as intended. Now this over here is actually a way to let the repeater only be powered for a game tick. So by this, uh, you could create one game tick delays and actually have four of these to split a process into four different ones. So you could have 20 hertz technology by just having four or five hertz ones. Now using update order of course you can generate even shorter pulses. These are functionally the same as a one game tick pulse though they are shorter and they teleport blocks faster. Mal correction here, only sticky pistons can teleport blocks and they accept one game tick pulses uh, equally as any shorter ones. Now here is a very simple way on how to utilize that. I'll leave the mechanics of how this works to decipher to the viewer, however as you see this is an instant repeater. Now using just these two mechanics you can create a lot of instant redstone, a lot of instant, well even computational redstone, but this is mostly what doors use. Another thing to note is that no tile tech in Minecraft has a one game tick reset time. Most of them linger at two. Now, priming a comparator basically works that when a comparator is first uh, powered, it schedules a tile tick for two game ticks. You can simply make it instant by cancelling it out with another tile tick. As you see there, that is one. But if you do both, it actually does operate instantly. The same is said. For the redstone torch. Now of course all of this technology is very compatible. The limits of redstone I would say are 20 hertz and instant. However no one has actually reached those limits but I do believe it is currently possible. Now here's an example of comparator priming in action. As you see these observers will go off first and they will power all of these comparators for well two game ticks. After that there's a two game tick period in which any input will be instant. As you see here, that is so. Now I'm gonna end this video with a challenge for you, the viewer. You can DM it to me directly on Discord if you manage to do it. And my challenge is to find to make a system that separates inputted info uh, by game ticks, right? So in sets of four, so that you could do it in five hertz. Well, do any operation on it in five hertz. So during the making of this video, I was informed that there is actually a theoretical way to do an infinite hertz redstone machine. It's actually using these things. As you see there, these actually can be retracted instantly just by deleting the piston head. Now this would need some very precise TNT timings and I don't exactly know how we'd pull it off but it is a theoretical infinite hertz. Now that's everything I had to say for this video. I hope I didn't mess up the title or the thumbnail. Uh, as always, thanks for watching, thanks for being here, feel free to join my discord and like, subscribe, comment, your feedback is very welcome and I'll see you next time.